So, Anthony, we did a podcast and we focused specifically on TurboTax. But what we're trying to get across is that tax preparation software may not be uh, good for you if you have foreign income from investments. That's right. Uh, the, you know, these software programs are pretty good if you have just 1099 W-2 income from domestic sources. But when things get a little crazy is where you start to go in offshore because they're simply not able to do it. A lot of the forms, they say right there on there that they won't prepare for yourself and that they say, well, go to irs.gov to do it. And really, you shouldn't go to irs.gov. You probably want to get a tax professional who is experienced with international tax returns to get it done. Exactly. Because if you don't do it correctly, we said... This person we talked about could have up to $60,000 in penalties. Right. The, the stakes are incredibly high. It's completely unlike a domestic tax return if you make a mistake on where they'll the IRS will send a notice explaining your 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 tax return was cor- incorrect. Here, statute of limitations on assessments are told, and here the penalties can be up to $10,000 for each form not filed, not filed correctly. And even there's one form uh, that the gift tax form for foreign gifts, there's also can be a percentage of the gift, even though there's no tax originally due. Exactly. All right. Well, watch and enjoy. Okay, so now let's talk about the fatal things that occurred. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number one was the extension. The extension. Um, The the first problem was uh, TurboTax did not give you, did not notify you that if you had an FBAR to file, that it was not extending the due date so that you would think that you'd had until October 17th for something. So that's the first error. The second error is that gift, that inheritance of $200,000 from from your uncle in Mm -hmm. Greece. Didn't ask for that. There's a Form 3520 obligation for it. Oh. Second problem, okay, all of your things, if you walk through it and if you use your logic to say what is what, and you're trying to say, well, TurboTax Deluxe is where you go to TurboTax your returns, Mm -hmm. you know, you basically just have dividend income. She put all her income in. All of her income from the dividends went in. Right. But it didn't tell you. If you looked at that, it didn't tell you for your income. It wasn't explicitly clear that you had a Form 5471 requirement for all those foreign foreign corporations, which you did. And the fact is, is that's incredibly time consuming. It's just not some form you're you're doing. It's something that's required. Also on the foreign partnership, it didn't tell you had a foreign partnership of an 8858 that you needed to file. Also... It didn't tell you anywhere that your your retirement program was likely a foreign trust. Oh. Yeah, you didn't know that. No. And there was probably a 3520A required to be filed with that or and or 3520. Those are the things it's not telling you. Now, it did reference it in other sections, but the way it comes up is like, well, tell us about your assets. It doesn't tell, it's not asking you your income mm-hmm. from it. Her income, she put in 100% there. So her tax return is, I guess, her taxes she's going to pay is generally correct, but that's not what foreign taxes are about. It's not just about your income. However the law works, whatever it works, when it comes to foreign things, it's just not their income that you're, they want. They want to know your assets. They want to know what you have overseas. And if you fail to file these forms, and this is the danger, there's $10,000 penalties per occurrence. Okay, so so right now, uh, right now Sasha has penalties of a... There's three fi- form 5471s, yep. an 8858, likely a 3520, 3520A. So we're at 60 grand the in F-bar. penalties. And the F bar, well, she, well, in this, in this circumstance, right, she, if she did have signatory authority on, on something, that would have been up to a 50% penalty for not filing. And there's, exactly. see, there's no, there's no late filing F bar. There's just a non filing F bar by the date. Mm-hmm. You didn't file it on the date. There's your penalty. That's, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so, wow, these are a whole bunch of penalties. It led you down the road mm-hmm. to get. and $60,000? You tried $60,000, right. It's not alerting you to what you should really be doing. And I think this is, you know, is this, I guess part of me isn't saying that maybe this is a failure of TurboTax. It's maybe a failure of our culture, our cultural that will believe, come on, taxes can't be that hard. Software has to be able to do something, Mm -hmm. right? It can't be that complicated. When it comes to foreign stuff, it is. Because you don't know the names of the things that things are. And you don't know, and it it, it baffles human comprehension. Why would the IRS make something so complicated when there's no purpose behind it? Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, maybe there is a purpose, but they are 
it is so much more complicated than it needs to be. It's so much more complicated than anything else in the world and how things are treated and why they're treated and the penalty and the stakes for getting a foreign tax return wrong are so incredibly significant. And by the way, all these forms that Mm -hmm. you didn't file um, leaves the statute of limitations open on the tax to assess. If you file your tax return, you usually have three or six years for the IRS to come back and audit you. Right. Okay. If you don't file um, form 5471, it leaves it open. For how long? Ever. Oh. Yeah, because you didn't put it down on your 8938. And if your 8938 isn't there, your statute's open forever. So you have an, you have a, a problem that may never go away I and think. penalties that are huge, even though you did your best efforts. I did. You, put, you, you, reported, your, you reported your income. Yeah. You did. It went there. If we found a place, and I mean, that's the thing. It's like, okay, well, I'm satisfied, right? We didn't know. There was that one part where we didn't know. It's like, what are all these other forms that they're mentioning? What are these? Because they're not saying what they are for. I continued, went further. I'm like, come on, there's going to have to be a place to put the income. There's going to have to be a place. Found it. Okay, great. Done. No other prompt saying, hey. By the way, this is what we mean to do. And this is really where, you know, you should never. And I mean, this is, you know, for a lot of people, TurboTax is fine. Mm -hmm. You're W-2. You have domestic income. Look, I'm not going to tell you you can't use it. But a second you go to foreign, you know, where you have foreign... You need someone. You need a. You need someone with a brain mm-hmm. who says, "Wait a second. This is what it is." Yes. You don't. The software cannot do this. You're so asking too much out of a software program. Not recommended for expats either. No. If you're expat, the expat actually it can be a little easier mm-hmm. because they're the foreign income exclusion. We did see that. Yep. That was a little bit more straightforward. But the problem with expats is usually now you're, there is probably going to be something else. Right. There's going to be a foreign pension. Oh, we didn't even mention life insurance. Oh. We could have added life insurance into our hypothetical, mm-hmm. which we did not. Um, because foreign life insurance is often not considered a life insurance, but a investment that may have a PFIC requirement, Passive Foreign Investment Company, Form 8621, which that came up nowhere. There was no, There was nothing... No no, there was nothing to that. Did you have a foreign life insurance policy? That were, there was nowhere. So there, there's another one. And there, there's an excise tax on your foreign premium too, Form 720. You see that it's impossible for a human being to design a software mm-hmm. for this. Um, you're, you're better off, you know, it's easier probably to get a man to the moon than try to think of how the human mind is thinking of these words and these complications of this software. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. And this was just, and you know, and again, we're, we're not on the deductions or credits yet because that's actually a little bit more straightforward and all the other issues. We're just talking about reporting your foreign income correctly. You're not given the correct prompts and you're not told the right thing and the results can be disastrous. So it can cost you a lot of money. Yeah. And this is why when we tell people, you know, we do a lot of foreign returns, it's like, this is not, there's a reason why it's taking us some time. Mm-hmm. And also, we have to have human eyes review something. You know, you just don't throw it down there. It's like, oh, it's good enough. You know, on domestic stuff, look, if you got something wrong, you'll get a CP2000 notice. Hey, we noticed up your numbers were incorrect. This is your real tax bill. Hey, we noticed you didn't report this 1099 INT income. We're going to add it in. Right. They let you know. With foreign returns, the IRS has no way of saying, hey, we noticed you left off your income from your... Um, your India life insurance, your PFIC income from your Indian life insurance policy, this is what we do. They have no way of knowing. And because they have no way of knowing, I think is the reason why they make it much more punitive, more, much more onerous to self-report these things. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, I make a cool mill a year, so I'm just going to hire you guys. Right. I think, okay. that's not, that, <laughs> I think you can do it. All right. All right. Well, you can like and comment below. If you have any questions or concerns, we'll get back to you. Um, You can subscribe to our channel so you get updates on awesome tax stuff. Thanks for watching. IRS Medic, the law offices of Parent and Parent, LLP. Real tax attorneys for tough tax problems.